Good day and thank you for watching the ACS Library. My name is Kyle and my goal is to help you prepare for the private pilot checkride for free in just five minutes a day. In today's video, we cover landing distances. Today, we will discuss the Cessna 172 Skyhawk. In the following videos, we discuss the Piper Archer and the Diamond DA-40. Anytime we're talking performance calculations, we'll want to have our aircraft's POH handy. Open up to the table of contents and find the performance section. Once we've turned to the performance section, let's jump into that table of contents and look for the landing distance data. Landing distances are affected by aircraft weight. Our charted distances are based on an aircraft at the maximum weight of 2,300 pounds, giving us a buffer any time we land below that weight. Before diving into the chart, we must read through the notes. The distances below were determined using proper short field technique. This means that if we plan to perform a normal or soft field landing, we can expect our landing distances to be greater than these listed values. We decrease distances by 10% for each 9 knots headwind, and we increase by 10% for each 2 knots tailwind. For this example, let's assume that we have a 16 knot headwind component during takeoff. If you are unfamiliar with how to find your headwind and crosswind components, please check out my video over crosswind component calculations linked below where I explain how to do it with nothing more than an iPhone calculator and a local METAR. We'll decrease our takeoff distance by 10% per 9 knots headwind. We have 16 knots, so let's plan to decrease the distance by only 15% rather than 20, leaving us with a bigger buffer for any imperfections during landing. Lastly, dry grass runways increase the ground roll distance by 45%. The numbers remain unadjusted when taking off from paved runways. Ground roll refers to the distance required for an aircraft to decelerate from touchdown speed to the fully stopped position. Distance to clear a 50-foot obstacle takes it a little further. This is the distance an aircraft would require to land after clearing a 50-foot obstacle at the approach end of the runway, plus the distance required to decelerate to the fully stopped position. We should pay especially close attention to both figures when operating to relatively short fields or those with obstacles at the approach end. Beyond weight, the landing distances are determined by three more factors. Pressure altitude, temperature, and winds. Let's say that pressure altitude at Imagination Land Airport today, based on the altimeter setting reported in the METAR, is roughly 3,300 feet. I will include a link in the description to a video describing how to find pressure altitude. We will select data from 3,000 feet, as that is the nearest value. Our temperature for this example, based on today's METAR, is 29 degrees Celsius, which will round up to 30. Once we've done this, we are left with our expected ground roll of 610 feet and our distance to clear a 50-foot obstacle of 1,405 feet. For winds, we mentioned at the beginning of the video that we expect a headwind component of 16 knots. Based on that value, we must decrease our expected distances by 15% each. Or, in other words, multiply these two values by 0.85 or 85%, leaving us with the adjusted distances of about 520 feet for our expected ground roll and 1,195 feet to clear the 50-foot obstacle. These expected distances should be compared to our runway lengths to determine whether or not conditions would make for a safe landing. To recap, the steps necessary to determine landing distances for the Cessna 172 that have been discussed in this video are as follows. Step 1. Find the landing distance chart. Step two, read the notes. Three, plug in pressure altitude and outside air temperature. Four, read the matching ground roll and 50 foot obstacle clearance distances. Step five, adjust the distances for winds. And six, compare these distances to available runway length. This concludes today's video covering determining landing distance in the Cessna 172 Skyhawk. As always, thank you so much for checking out the ACS library. If you've learned something from today's video, I hope that you might like or share it. If you're interested in seeing more, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to the right of that to enable notifications. Questions and feedback are always welcome in the comments section. Thanks again and safe flying.